Hello, Eastern Region. Welcome back to uh, another episode in our series of conference conversations to get us all prepared and excited and ready for when we all meet up together in Providence in just a few short weeks. Um, today, we're just so excited to be welcoming Dr. Christine Noel, the director of the Rhode Island Children's Chorus, and uh, for you all to get a chance to get to know Christine better and to get to know a little bit about the choir that we will we'll be performing Wednesday evening in Providence. So, Dr. Noel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here. And for those of us who might not know you or know much about you, could you please introduce yourself to the Eastern Region members? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Amanda, for having me. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Noel. I'm the founder and artistic director of the 200 member uh, Rhode Island Children's Chorus uh, and the 90 member Symphonic Chorus, uh, the Providence Singers. My undergraduate degree is in music education from Rhode Island College. And uh, both my master's and DMA are in conducting from Boston University. I also uh, spent a year uh, in Ketchkamet, Hungary studying at the Kodai Institute of Music. Uh, and I lived in Florence for two years um, where I studied Italian and worked with two Florentine choirs. So uh, when I uh, returned to the United States uh, from Italy in 2003, I felt compelled to, um, to create a children's course. And there were a few reasons for that. Um, the first is that at that time, uh, 21 years ago, at least in our area, um, children's courses were not as common or widespread as they are today. Um, but I also wanted to create an organization with a dual mission of um, cu um, cultivating a, a strong musical ensemble and really building young voices, while mm -hmm. also um, creating a, a, a safe place for young people to feel seen and known. So I, um, when I was in middle school, I experienced uh, a great deal of bullying and that really had a traumatic effect on my life. So when I became a teacher, um, it became very apparent that I needed to do what I could to try to make a difference in, in young people's lives. So I created this organization and uh, consciously sought to help foster the self-esteem in, in our students and create an atmosphere where the students lift each other up. And that is what our ICC is, is uh, all about. That's amazing. I, I did not know any of that. <laughs> and I am so glad to hear that story. Um, yeah. I'm sure that many people are going to uh respond to that yeah. to that little bit about you and about how you came to create the rhode mm -hmm. island's children's chorus and that that leads us really into kind of the next uh question on yeah. on our list is for you to just tell us about your ensemble um who are they who are your singers and so what the what can we be expecting to hear from them in in providence so the so i should start by saying um rhode island children's chorus has performed at several uh acda conferences over the over the last year so most recently uh baltimore philadelphia and 10 years ago they performed in providence um as one of the the opening choirs in at those uh particular conferences it was the um most advanced group the chamber chorus um mm which is a smaller elite group of high school students who performed. Okay. But this year, um, in an effort to be more inclusive, it will be our lyric chorus, our middle school students who will perform at the, at the conference. And they sing beautifully and with polish, but they're younger. Um, they're grades five through eight. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a larger group and it's also a more diverse group. And I feel that it really does a better job at representing Providence um, than some of our uh, some of our older groups. And they are so joyful and so honored to have this experience. And I think um, the uh, I think they're very excited to sing for ACDA. And I think the attendees will find um, their music making uh, to be vibrant and joyful. 
So That's I can tell amazing. you a bit about um, the repertoire uh, that we'll yeah. perform. Uh, so we'll perform music from a wide range of composers. Bob Shilcott's uh, Like a Singing Bird with Sign Language by the whole choir. Uh, Rollo Dil Dilworth's, Rollo Dilworth's Prince of Peace, which features his original music combined with uh, Peace Like a River. Mm -hmm. Gustav Holst's I Vow to Be My Country with a Descant by Dan Forrest. Uh, an arrangement of the Andalusian folk song El Vito, Blake Richter and Taylor Schaefer's delightful arrangement of the fox um, with body percussion, drum set, and violin, and two other pieces as well. We'll leave something <laughs> to be a surprise, but so um, <laughs> they we've had uh, rehearsals last semester and just started again in January, and they are so excited. And we're also really excited to welcome uh, conductors and music educators from across the East Coast to Providence. Yeah, yeah. Well, and thank you for being, you know, the hometown heroes uh, Absolutely. For, for this for this conference. Um, it's it's wonderful to feature and celebrate the work of local choirs in in the place of of the conference so we're, we're really excited and we're really grateful to you um you know it's it's going to be a memory that those kids have forever um sure you know, performing at an acda conference you know it's it's the most it might be the most discerning audience that you ever perform for but honestly i think acda audiences are the most grateful I agree. And the most, like, like, <laughs> they're cheering you on. They're going to be cheering those kids on, you know, in a way that those kids may have never felt. Because uh, I think the gratitude and the appreciation in terms of energy from the audience uh, is just overwhelming. And and I'm excited for those kids to have that memory. Um, speaking of ACDA, if you think back. I'm going to ask you, what was your very first conference or your very first kind of memory or engagement with the ACDA? Gosh, I think the first ACDA conference I attended was a national conference in okay. Santa, San Antonio, um, hmm. just after I graduated from college. And that so that was okay. like 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, and and to go from never having attended to a conference to a national conference is <laughs> quite a life changing kind of core memory experience. It was truly inspiring um, and and really eye opening for me to okay. to see that as a young conductor um, and a, as a young music educator. And it just kind of set the bar high early on in my career in terms of what is possible with young, with young people. At that okay. time, I didn't know I would one day uh, work with adults and professional orchestras, but, um, but I knew that I would be a music teacher. And, and so I was particularly interested at that time in what the younger groups, the middle school, uh, elementary groups um, in high school were doing. Okay. Um, and then it, that just, you know, conducting on an ACDA program became a dream of mine then from 2000, 20, 24 years ago. Um, yeah. And uh, and what it's meant to me since then to have the opportunity, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of, of our conversation, to con uh, connect with colleagues, um, yeah. that is priceless. It's so important, I think, to stay connected with other people who share your struggles and share your um, I, share ideas and and who understand what it means to plan repertoire and engage with young people and keep our rehearsals fresh and inspiring and and the responsibility we have to to really make an impact on these young lives beyond the music that's yeah. something that i i hold as a, as an enormous responsibility and mm -hmm. um and so for me acda has really enabled me to uh to connect with um with others who are in the same in the same field, but also in the same scenarios. Yes, agreed, hundred yeah. um, percent. So, thinking specifically about Providence, mm -hmm. uh, about, about this conference, is there anything that you're really looking forward to? An element, maybe it's connecting with colleagues, maybe it's 
the Vote Just Eight concert, you know, maybe it's like, is there something in particular that you're just really, really excited about, about the Providence experience? I'm certainly excited about Vote Just Eight. <laughs> but I view conferences as a huge opportunity opportunity for uh, for professional growth, um, not only in terms of attending the sessions, but but really having a chance to sit back and listen to the work that my colleagues are doing. Um, so no no specific choir, just the mm -hmm. the. Um, I'm looking forward to what I will take away from from another fantastic conference, and I know it'll be great. Right. It will be. It's going to be. <laughs> we are only 44 days away right now. And uh, it's it's going to be wonderful. And we're so excited to to welcome you and all of your students. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful uh, concert with you and the Boston Children's Chorus and Cora Allegro. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're just so grateful to you. So thank you, thank you so thank you much so for giving uh, your time and your time to this interview, uh, just so we can reach out to the membership and um, encourage them to get excited and to, Absolutely. Be, to be there with you and all of your singers on uh, Wednesday evening, the 28th at our opening concert. So thank sure. you so much, Christine. Thank you, thank you. Amanda. We'll Take see care. you there. Okay, bye-bye.